All right. Good morning. YouTube is ready. I'm ready. If you are tuning in, this is my first painting class that I'm going to be doing of many on YouTube. And I'm hoping that you will have fun like we would in my class. I'm going to start in like five more minutes right now. If you have not yet. Hold on. Hey, Maya. Hold on. You need paint brushes, paper, or canvas, or if you don't have a paper or canvas, you can use a cereal box like I am doing. I just took an old cereal box, cut off the edges, and turned it around. That's all it is. So, and paint, of course. Um, I created a purple and green one yesterday, and today I'm going to do a different color. Yellow orange frog with a teal background. So to make, I don't have orange. So if you remember, orange is created by mixing two primary colors, your yellow and your red. So I wanted a yellow orange frog with a teal background, which you can create teal by mixing blue and green together. I need a little blue. And I have some leftover green from a previous project. So in the next two to three minutes, just get your supplies together. I'm going to go grab my coffee, not going to lie. And we will get started with our relaxation frog, because who does not need to just sit back and relax during this time? Okay, so hopefully you got everything you needed and we're just gonna get started. The first thing you need to do is paint your background. And I wanted the teal color. Thank you, Maya. I don't know. For my background. So teal, like I said, it's a mixture of blue and green. Put it up here. Mixture of blue and green. Put that there for y'all. Put some white, just to lighten it up some. And then you'll just start painting your whole background. Go while you're painting with a back and forth sweeping motion to create the same textured pattern on your whole background. If you decide to do up and down and left and right, it will create like conflicting designs. So if you want a nice smooth background, you'll just go back and forth with your paintbrush. And this part goes fairly fast. We're not trying to add a lot of paint to it because we want it to dry fast. Sorry. 
If you're painting on a canvas, what I do is paint the edges, the top and the bottom of the canvas to make sure that the whole thing is painted. Sorry about that on YouTube, guys, about the blurriness. And after that, you should have a nice painted background. Go back over it just to make sure that there's not any lumps of paint to make it to make it look like it's clumpy, and that will also make the paint not dry as fast as you would want it to. I did forget to say you should have a cup of water to clean off your paint brushes if you do not have a lot of choices. The next thing we're going to do is create the frog. To make the frog, you will start from the bottom of your paper, canvas, whatever you're using. I need to make my orange color first. And what you're going to do is start from the bottom. If you go from the middle and go over like an inch, that'll be the base part of one of the frog. And then you'll do the same thing, go in the middle. Just go over a little bit. And that'll be the base of the frog where he'll be sitting down. I'm going to make an upside down U, but it's going to be a long, stretched out U. So you just go up, over, and down. After you do that, you'll take your paintbrush, another paintbrush, or the same one, and just paint it in. If it does mix in with the other color, just keep layering it until you get the color that you want. Now that I got the main part of my frog, I'm gonna go back and create one of his legs. So it'll be an upside down U. Okay. Yeah. You're gonna go right in this area, make a, well, actually, I would say a backwards upside down J. Curve over that way and paint it in. We'll do the same thing on the other side. It should look like a cactus for my fourth and third graders who may have created cactuses for their rodeo art. Curve. And paint it all the way in. I have to add some white to make it pop out more. And your frog can be any color that you want it, as well as your background.
after you finish doing your frog legs and head part, we're gonna go to the top and make two little circles to represent his eyes or her. I'm up here. And another on the other side. It's okay if your frog starts blending in with the background color. I'll just add a little bit more character to your frog. After you finish painting the eyes, the body, and the legs, we're going to go and do the arm part. What you will do is take your same paintbrush. You're going to make a diagonal like, line down and then a horizontal line going out. Same thing on the other side, a diagonal line down and a horizontal line going out. Once you finish doing that, you're going to create his little frog fingers. We're gonna start with a dump first and we'll just do like a little curve up on both sides. A little curve. To do the bottom part of his fingers, you're going to do like a line going down. And then you're gonna curve up a little bit. And then you'll do another curve like you're trying to connect his finger and then you'll do one that's a little bit longer. Let me zoom in on that one. Do it again. You're gonna do a line going out and curving up. Another line. And if it goes off the page, it's okay to go off the page. Don't try and squish it in. Going off the page makes it look more realistic. So line out, curve up, another line curving up, and one more. And then go back over inside the body just to make it blend a little bit better. All right, so now what you're going to do is take a darker color or a black. And we're going to do some outlining of your frog. What you're going to do first is go where his legs are. And we'll just outline the outside of his legs. Do the same thing to the other side. Now we're gonna bring our paintbrush and curve inside the body but not all the way down. You're gonna curve, follow that curve, and just go in the downward area, and stop about an inch or two from the bottom. You're gonna do the same thing other side. Curve, follow the curve, going down. Once you finish that, go towards the middle part of where you see the leg and just do a line going up at a little bit of an angle. But not all the way. 
That's where we're going to show his knees are bent. We need to do the same to the other side. Get some more paint if you need to. And we're going to trace the outside of the body. Start at the base of where the eye is. Just follow it down. Do the same thing to the other side. Start at the base of the eye. And just follow it down. We're going to go in between the two eyes at the top, and we're going to just paint that. Now, you can go a little bit inside the eye, but do not connect these two lines. Just leave it a little open. Outlining a piece of art makes it pop out from its surroundings. Now you're going to go over and outline both eyes. And outline the other eye. And what we're going to do now is create his eyes but they're going to be close because he's meditating or relaxing. To do that, you just draw a line, basically cutting it in half on both sides. Now we're going to create his mouth. So you're going to go about an inch down from where the eyes are, like in this area, and just create the next thing we're going to do is outline his arms. Now this part may be a little tricky because the arms are a little small, but just take your time and if you mess up, it's okay. You can always go back and fix it. Trace the outside of his arm and his fingers. The bottom part of his arm. And you'll do the same thing to the other side. Now, this is where you will take your cute tip if you have one, or you can use the back of your paintbrush. And what you'll do is create a fly flying around the top. What you can do is maybe spill out the word with the dots, or you just create the dots of the fly like this. To create the body of a little fly or net, all you have to do is just draw or paint 
a line like that and get another color, usually white or yellow, some white color. And paint a wing on both sides. You can add one fly, two flies, or a lot of flies. It is your picture. You can be as creative as you want to. I'm going to do one fly. Add a couple of more dots. And basically that is your frog. If you would like to add texture to the body, what I found that you can do is create a dotted or just padding on it to create a more textured body than having it go up and down with the line strokes, paint strokes. And if you do create this little texture pattern, just when you're finished, go back over the black lines so that they pop out a little bit more. A little white. <laughs> so going back over the lines will just look like this. And there you guys have it. Hopefully you have your relaxing frog sitting somewhere. I'm gonna move it from the table. There. I'm gonna cut off my top since it was covered up by the clipboard. But there you should have it. A frog sitting down, relaxing, maybe on his log. Thanks for watching. And um, I am always open for suggestions. I was doing this because I had a lot more younger children ask to paint something fun. But you older kids, if you want something else, just let me know. I'm always here. I'm reading my messages. And if you have any questions, I'm here to help you out. Thank you guys and have a great day. Bye.